This weekend's Academy Awards will honor dozens of movies that have been enjoyed by millions of people around the world. But not all those people were able to see what was on screen. As WGBH News reporter Craig Lamolt shows us, technology is making movies more accessible than ever to the blind, and it may soon be coming to a theater near you. Kim Charlson loves going to the movies, even though she can't actually see what's happening. Charlson lost her vision when she was 11 years old. Back then, you know, the only description I would get was from my mother or father whispering and telling me what was happening. And people around us would get very annoyed. Now, Charlson's an advocate for more accessible movies. She's president of the American Council of the Blind, as well as the library director at the Perkins School for the Blind. Movies are such an important part of our culture and our society that people talk about them every day, your colleagues, your friends, it's a social outing. And people who are blind want to have that same kind of experience with their friends and family. And they can, thanks to audio technology that describes what's happening on the screen. And I take the headphones and I put them on. So now I'm going to be listening for the description. Yes, sit alone in a dining hall. Walking upstairs, the young writer smokes a pipe. Descriptive video service, or DVS, is narrated in the pauses so that it doesn't interfere with the dialogue. Seven of the films nominated for Best Picture at this weekend's Oscars had audio description available. Charlson says she appreciated it in The Theory of Everything, which dramatizes physicist Stephen Hawking's story as he faces the neurological disease ALS. The description was so important to really understanding the struggles that he was going through as his disability progressed. The audio description for The Theory of Everything was done by the Media Access Group at WGBH. The group started doing audio descriptions for TV shows and then did its first movie in 1997. In those early years, we did about six films a year. Uh, we had to prove the concept to the theater producers, uh, theater owners, the movie companies. And today, we're doing over 100 films a year, working with all the major studios. In a dressing room, a man seated in the lotus position levitates two feet off the floor. Audio descriptions have become more common as movie theaters go digital. The descriptions can be embedded in the movie itself, only to be heard by people in the audience with transmitters. The Department of Justice wants to require theaters to offer devices for both closed captioning and audio descriptions. The DOJ estimates the cost ranges from $3,000 to $8,000 per screen. The National Association of Theater Owners says the proposal is too expensive as it's written, and they want to relax some of the requirements on theaters. The DOJ will issue its final ruling in the fall. For Kim Charlson, that's great news. She says accessibility should be standard practice for movies, from production to release. So if accessibility can be part of the game plan right from the beginning, it's going to benefit everybody. And again, Adam, full disclosure, WGBH is a big player in this uh, in this industry, making a lot of movies uh, this way. All right, coming off that caveat, 8000 bucks for an analog screen sounds to me like a lot of money for mm -hmm. theaters to be uh, paying out, especially for indie movie theaters, I would think. So how worried is the industry? Yeah, especially for those art house films. Some of those big auditoriums, they may have 1,000 seats. doesn't mean that they get 1,000 people in those seats right. every, every showing. And there is a concern that uh, because the number of devices they have to invest in is based on a seat count. They say, you know, maybe it should be based more on, on use and real need. All right. Craig Lamalt, thanks as always. You're welcome.